Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Predator Exotics. Now, today we're going to be setting up a crested gecko tank for one of our close friends. This will be one of our basic setups for a crested gecko. So, in this setup, it's just a basic setup like Ollie mentioned. It's not an elaborate setup, so we've got some of the soil that we're going to expand with water. We've got basic foam background, some fake plants. Obviously, all your essentials like your lighting, your heating, your heat mat, um, and your thermometer and hydrometer to go with it. Right, okay, I'm just editing the video and I realised that we actually didn't put a price point in for how much the tank setup actually cost us. So this tank setup cost us about £210. Now, of course, that was using some spare parts that we had and getting the tank off of Facebook Marketplace, where, of course, it is a lot cheaper. But anyway, with that, let's get back to the video. Now, the first step is, of course, putting in the soil. This can take up to 30 minutes. Now, we haven't actually used this soil before. First time. So we're going to see if that's actually true. It may take longer, it may take less, but we're going to head into that now. Uh, so we've got our two litres of water. We've got our bucket and our cocoa bricks. So it actually says to use three litres of water per cocoa brick. Um, but we're going to start off with two because you can always add more water, but you can't take more water out. So this is basically a compressed brick. So it's all coconut fibre and stuff like that. So we're going to put it in here. And the instruction set takes about 30 minutes, um, but we're going to add this and see how long it takes. So it is an hour and 10 minutes in, um, it says 30 minutes and you can stir it and it's ready to go. Obviously we've had a few more difficulties, so you can see how much water. We've added another 500 millilitres, so we're up to two and a half litres out of the recommended three litres. Um, we're still waiting for this to absorb, but it does take a lot of breaking up. You can see here these chunks, are, they're quite solid and the middle is quite dry. Uh, so we've just been trying to break up as much as possible and then soak it in that water But it's taking a lot longer as I said, it's 30 minutes, but we're at an hour and ten at the moment Yeah, it got to about 30 minutes and then we had to start breaking it up with a knife uh, Because it was just taking way too long. So we actually finally eventually got it cut in half uh, So we could soak it a bit better. It is starting to to fluff up way more than than what it was before, but uh, definitely, as you can see, not 30 minute recommendation. All right, so we've waited about an hour and 45 minutes now for this soil, and it's getting to the point finally of where it's gonna be usable. Uh, now, of course, this 30 minute uh, estimated time on the back of the brick was not true. Now, we don't know if that's a formula change or you know, maybe we did something wrong, um, but it, we read some reviews online that, yeah, recently it hasn't been working out, and it seems to be describing what we went through. Yeah, it's just, it's just quite fibrous, so we tried breaking it up, and there's a lot of fibre which, which fluffs it up quite well, um, but it's not absorbing that water as quick as we, as we broke it up, it's absorbing, but it's just not absorbing as quick as we would like. So what we're going to do is we're also going to do a, another brick overnight, add that to the tank later on but for now we're going to use this one as kind of like a base layer so we can do the setup yes hello it's me again uh so we actually did get more results with the second brick that we used later that night tom actually put it in warm water this time and it sped it up dramatically uh just for you guys and future use of this product yeah we do recommend that you use warmer water instead of saving you that long two hour wait that we did all right back to the video So the background, if you buy the Exoterra new, it does come with the background. Um, you can buy the replacements. So we bought this. Uh, it's the 45 by 45 background. And it's a foam background or styrofoam background. Hold on. Um, so it's got it's quite a good texture. It's 3D, so your animal can climb around it. But on the back, it's got the slots for your wires and stuff. But 
we're just gonna. Thankfully, the one of the good things about the fiber from Exoterra is uh, no need to actually stick it to the back. It slots in nicely and fits uh, like a nice snug. Very snug. <laughs> So when putting in the background, as you can see, it does take a bit of pressure, but you want to do more of like a wiggling technique because uh, I've seen a lot of pictures online of where people have obviously pushed too hard and snapped the foam background. Of course it is foam, it will snap quite easily, but as you can see, you know, it just takes a little time, but you can get it in nicely, and this thing is not coming out. So it's still a little bit wet, um, but we're going to put it in and it will absorb because it's going to be a quite a thin layer. So we are going to add, you can see it's not very thick and there's still a bit more to absorb. So look, see there's these, these bits in it that you've got to break up which aren't the greatest. Um, but we are going to add another brick on top um, and hopefully overnight it might work a little bit better. We'll update you on that and see, see if that's a better technique. Because um, we do want a couple inches worth of substrate so it keeps that humidity in your tank. So here we've actually got Exoterra's canopy combo dish. Um, you've got a space for water and a space for the food as well. Um, and it clips onto the side. So you want your food and water to the opposite side of your heat, heat source. So the heat mat's going to be on this side. So we're going to put our canopy dish on that side. So also sticking to the glass, we've got the uh, Exoterra Boast thermometer and hydrometer. And we're going to be sticking those to the opposite end so they can measure how much humidity and what kind of temperature that they've got inside their enclosure. Making sure that it's nice and level. And then just placing the thermometer above that as well. Giving you two nice dials on the side for easy reading. So with our canopy combo dish, on the back it's got a slider. So this bit sticks to the glass and you can slide it in and out. Just peel off and put on. Oh. Oh. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's just suction to the glass. <laughs> uh, so it's not actually sticky, so you just stick it to the side, it's like a suction type thing, it doesn't look like it would be. So stick this here first. Yeah, make sure we get all the air bubbles out as best as we can. It's pretty secure because you don't want it falling on your gecko or your gecko climbing on it and it falls off. Slots in there quite nice. Yeah, feel that's secure. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty that's nice. So we've got Exoterra's vines here. We've got the large and the small. Um, they're both the same length, it's just the thickness of the vine. So we went for two different thicknesses because it makes it look a bit more naturalistic. Um, so they're bendable. They've actually got a wire in the middle. So you can twist it to whatever shape you want. You can wrap it round different stuff in your tank. We're just going to see what shapes we can make um, and see what looks best. So we've had a little play around. Um, we decided the thin one is a little bit less stable. So we went for the twist around, which they do show on the packaging. And then the bigger one is a thicker, so we just played around with it. We ended up looping this one round the bigger one, so it is actually quite stable. Obviously it's for a crested gecko, so they're not, not that heavy. Um, but you just got to make sure it's as secure as possible and the gecko can climb around freely. So after adding the vines, we're gonna add some of the foliage in now to give it more of a natural look. So we got three different types of plants, um, various different species, various different 
lengths and stuff just to add more natural look to it if you've got different types of foliage. To give it a bit more variety in the tank as well. Instead of just having one kind of plant throughout the whole thing, you know, gives it a nicer look. So we're going to drape these around the enclosure. So what we've got to keep in mind our hot spot is going to be here with the heat map. So we're going to try and hide that with the larger foliage so it covers that and it also acts as a hide for this gecko. And you can hide in that hot spot amongst the leaves. So this is the kind of foliage setup that we're going to go with. So yeah, it's, it's draping around the enclosure, which is, looks quite naturalistic. Then we've kept in mind our heat mat's going to go on the side, so the gecko can climb in amongst these leaves and feel secure when it's warming up. And then also on this cooler side, the gecko can come in and hide amongst these leaves at the back here. We've also draped this one in the middle. Um, once you put the, the foliage amongst these vines, it looks a lot more naturalistic. So we're going to head, go ahead, even though it's got this small water bowl, we're also going to provide a larger water bowl that we're going to put down the front here. So if it chooses to drink from the ground or up by its food bowl, it's got an option either way. So we've got our heat map. We've got a pro rep heat map um, and you want it to be on one side of the tank to provide a hot spot. So you can see can hide amongst these leaves and they can warm up at its leisure so we're just going to put it about here so above that substrate line and before this background so this of course is a non-adhesive one uh, non-self-adhesive so we're going to be using some tape just to hold it down. So you can use sellotape, just don't go over the actual heating element uh, unless you want to use electrical tape to be safe. But this has per worked perfectly fine in a lot of other enclosures we've done. So we're now going to attach the thermostat to this because um, you do want to monitor the temperature. So we've chosen the Habistat, which is this one. So it's got a small dial. So you can pick whichever temperature you want uh, and the thermometer or the temperature probe will go into the inside where the gecko will be sitting uh, and it will measure the temperature on the inside keeping it around 80 to 82 degrees for our crested gecko. So we're putting our temperature probe onto the heat mat. So if you want to run the temperature probe on the top you do have to cut just a slightly small notch out of your background but then it will sit in perfectly. So what's great about the foliage, it actually disguises all the wires and stuff like that. So you simply just put it through where the wire holes go, and then your mesh will clip on the top, and you can slide the sliders at the back, and it actually will cover up all the other holes, so you've just got the one wire hole that you need being exposed. So for lighting, crested geckos don't necessarily need UV, but we believe it will actually improve the health of your gecko and bring out some of the colours. Um, so we've chosen to use Arcadia, which personally I think is the best brand of lighting you can get. And it's a Pro T5, which is a lot better than the T8s um, and a lot better than the compact bulbs you get. We've never actually used this, but all the Arcadia products I've used in the past are amazing. I think we have Arcadia lighting all of our tanks right now, yeah. um, all the ones that actually do require UVB. Now, of course, this is a 7% UVB for our Crested Gecko. So it's a 12-inch uh, bulb, so it comes with the reflector. 
which you get the T5 bulb. The T5s are slightly thinner than the T8s, but they are actually a higher output bulb. And then of course you do get brackets to uh, mount it onto something if you wish, but we're just gonna lay it on top. And then of course comes with your two cables. So you can put the light wherever you want. Um, we chose to put it in the middle, but on the front panel of the mesh. This is so that it's got darker areas at the back of the tank that it can go and hide in and feel secure. Whereas you still get a nice lit terrarium at the front. So obviously this is just the shade dweller. It's designed for animals that live in the shade or don't come out during the bright, brightest parts of the day. If you did want to go bioactive with your setup, obviously we've got the fake plants, but this light probably isn't enough to grow live plants. You're going to want an LED bulb on the top as well. This is going to ensure good plant growth and keep your whole terrarium ecosystem a lot more healthy. So in the end, we're very happy with how the actual end result came out. So just bear in mind, obviously it's quite a thin layer of substrate at the moment. It's, it's not a digging species, but it's to maintain that humidity within the tank. So we're going to try soaking one of these extra bricks overnight, see how that fluffs up. There's, this has still got a little bit more to absorb, but we're just going to add a thicker layer at the bottom of our tank. So we hope you guys have enjoyed our kind of budget setup for the Crested Gecko. Uh, yeah, I mean, I... I'm really happy with how this has come out. I think it looks really nice. Uh, and the friends that we're going to be giving this to are going to be very happy with it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Yeah, leave us a comment for anything you guys have in your Crested Gecko tank that maybe we didn't feature today. But we hope you guys have enjoyed and we'll see you guys next Friday.